They're the country's most remote police force. You can be 250 kilometres from the nearest uh, anything. Let's rock and roll. Patrolling over a million square kilometres of the world's most unforgiving landscape. They keep the peace. It looks like it's starting to get out of control. Without losing their cool. <laughs> Just doing our job. Territory cops. Tonight. Is that for here, dude? If a man bun in Darwin isn't criminal enough... Fancy seeing you here. This bloke gets busted twice in one day. You're not having a good day. Hey, son, oh, no! A raid on a drug den turns up some slippery characters. How many cops does it take to catch a snake? And the Cinderella story. Where are my shorts? Territory style. Where are my shorts? It's a 5am breakfast for Seamus, Tanya and Tizzy and in the NT they breed these cops so tough they've traded donuts for muffins. We still like donuts but it's um, <laughs> yeah these muffins aren't bad though. What are you putting on my muffin Yogi? <laughs> <laughs> Secret ingredient. Yogi's the best muffin maker in the NT. So everyone meets up on night shift, comes and sees Yogi. Yogi! Oh man. People in property crime, we're one unit, one family. We are all there for one another. Thanks, mate. Good work, Yogi. Yeah. You know, a lot of us have come from different areas, have different experiences. A lot of guys in Trident have worked out bush, come from interstate like myself. <laughs> so we all bring something different to the table. And um, I think we complement one another. There is no other copper in the territory that drinks uh, strawberry milk. <laughs> Got to keep in touch with your feminine side, you know? <laughs> Back at HQ, Tizzy is heading up a raid on a well-known drug den. The situation is this. Methamphetamines are being sold from the address in Malak. They expect to find three dealers who are not only in the business of selling drugs, but bad batches of them. There is a number of incidents involving persons from that address under the influence of ice being taken to hospital. We've received keys, however, if they've changed the locks, we've got permission to force entry. Given the fact that it is a drug house and we know that there's a lot of illegal drugs moving in and out of that location, there may be other persons there, so just um, yeah, have each other's back for this one. When you act on information, you've got to think of the other officer's safety. You don't know what's in the house, you don't know what threats, you don't know who's going to be in there, so you just want to make sure that your buddy's going to be all right. We're strike force tried it. Logged on until 1,500 hours, had you copy. We're just approaching the location now. Righto, if everyone's ready, let's go. Dog's in the front yard. With the front covered, Tizzy heads around the back to try the key. No, wrong key. The locks had been changed. Luckily, he's brought along his own set of keys. Police, that's right! Yep. What shift have you got to work? Uh, just a night shift. It's an old cliche, but like most cops, Lockie says he's married to the job, and he literally is. Just watch where you're driving, that's Steve. Yep, you guessed it. That's his wife, Sandy. I'm two years older than him, yeah. so I wasn't too keen on it to begin with. But he won me over. Yeah. <laughs> more, more persistence pays off, probably. Me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, big fella. Sandy works the beat in the mounted unit while Lockie's a street cop. He loves a good cat. Give me a pat. She is a really good copper. She's really intelligent. She's really thorough. She's got a really good investigations background. And she's also just a caring person. Yeah, do you want to hold him? Yeah. The pair met through mutual mates in the force and take working together as a bonus. A lot of the days that we come home and we have a big discussion about some of the problems that we face today and there's also that understanding of sometimes we don't really want to talk about it. I think there's a, a greater understanding as well if, you know, he calls me and he's not going to be able to come home for six hours and it's my birthday. Um, I understand the job, I understand that he can't just pick up and leave. So at this stage, mate, I'm just going to advise you that you have the right to remain silent. Wonderful. You're under arrest for failing to leave a licensed premises, OK? It's good. It kind of keeps me grounded in a way as well because I don't get too big because I'm not even the best police officer in my house, let alone the station, so... Well, Lockie, tonight could be your night as Darwin's party strip is going off. Sometimes it can be crazy. I've literally seen Mitchell Street glowing blue and red with, like, eight police cars just parked up with little spot fights and just trouble everywhere. Yeah, look out, ladies, it's going to be sick. 
Watch your head. Yes, sir. Sandy's also working on the night shift, and she's got a new recruit. This is Amaral. He's four year old. This is his first night shift. And this is Hightower. He's one of our more experienced patrol horses. There's a lot of intoxicated people on the street, so we're just patrolling the main CBD at the moment. So we'll do the main four streets um, and try to provide any backup that any of the foot members need. These horses are specially trained to cope with the noise and intimidation of drunk or aggressive crowds, but sometimes that's easier said than done. Outside Monsoon Nightclub, a bloke's just been kicked out and is trying to fight the bouncers over a missing shoe. Where am I going? But even once he's got it back, he still wants to crack on. We've gone up and tried to have a chat to him. He's become aggressive, yelling and screaming. We've tried to push him off the road. He's become even more aggressive at the horses. When someone's on the road like that, they're obviously not obeying directions. They've got no idea where they are. The horses provide some sort of shield or cover, so we usually try to shepherd that person off onto the safety of the road um, and use the horses as blockers. In Darwin, on a busy night like this, aggro spreads like wildfire. And Lockie and Drew are called to help sort things out. Okay, I don't see hey, hey, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Get, get, back. get back. Get back. But this Cinderella's not going down without a fight. Wait. Calm down. Calm. Stop resisting. Get on the ground. Working in traffic gives senior constable Sarah Hutchinson a good chance to get out and meet the locals. You look way too young to be driving. <laughs> I'm 21, actually. Are you really? Wow, fountain of youth. Um, Perfect. Like a pro. <laughs> <laughs> the people in the Territory are varied. Let's just, I'll put that politely. You're obviously continuing Movember. <laughs> you realise we're almost I, at the I end of the seminar. Oh. <laughs> What's your name? Sheriff. Sheriff. If you believe it or not. Really? Your name's Sheriff? Yeah. Once you know me, like, no one ever forgets me, so... There are some great characters up here, and I've come across quite a lot of them. I'm sure there's still many out there that I'm yet to meet. And there's plenty of chances, because driving without a licence seems to be how they roll up here at the top end. I've left my licence at home. Have got any idea at all? No. Is there any reason you're driving without a licence? No. In fact, some turkeys lose their licence and pretend it never, ever happened. For some reason, people who get disqualified by the magistrate don't take any notice of it. Come straight out five minutes after being disqualified and uh, get in their car and drive off. And it happens all the time. Which is why the cops are running a stealth operation, cruising the Darwin Magistrates Court car park. The six people going to court today, I think out of the six, three have been involved in motor vehicle crashes whilst they're intoxicated. So these are the people that we want to keep off the road. And up rolls customer number one. It's not one there, is it? No petrol cap and a dodgy front end. In police speak, a dead giveaway. I don't know, but he looks pretty good, doesn't he? Oh. Hutchie runs a check on the plates and they circle back around. Now, that car back there has got the wrong number of plates on. We are looking for a couple of silver sedans. That Maybe was a silver sedan. Of... All right, we'll go back there. He may not have been one of the people they were looking for, but he is now. I want to get him before he gets out of the car park. He might even run. You've got to ask yourself, why would you park in the courthouse car park with dodgy number plates? So this guy's going to have a reasonable explanation, right? Where'd you get these number plates from? You found them. With an aggro Cinderella having a go at the horses, Lockie and his partner Drew have rushed in to pull the bloke in the line. Stop resisting! Get on the ground! Alexis is out here travelling, lost a shoe in a nightclub, and even though he's got it back, he's been picking fights ever since. Give your arms out. Just stop, man. Just stop. Stop resisting. But this is one blue that he's not going to win. So you're under arrest at the moment for resisting police. Three defences, you understand? In his fight with the coppers, that missing shoe's gone walkabout again. Now sit up. Don't worry about your shoes. Stand up on your feet. On your feet. My shoes! Calm down. While Alexis will be spending the night in lockup, 
the shoe remains at large. Ooh, I'd hate to see what would happen if he lost them both. Good, mate, choice. Sergeant Slate and I have approached the male. We've placed our hands on him and informed him that he was under arrest. Uh, at that stage, the male has actively resisted us. Uh, he shrugged, shrugged the sergeant off and uh, formed a clenched fist. And it was my belief that he was uh, going to strike him. Yeah. He was taken to the ground and uh, resisted our attempts to place him under arrest. He will go to the watch house now and he'll be able to sober up and uh, be spoken to in the morning. Looks like Alexis chose the wrong couple to mess with. And wife Sandy's not the only fan keeping tabs. Now this is my mum, Julie, and my sweet sister, Ashley. Hello. Yeah, first time we see him in action. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah what's the two Yeah. Very proud of him. <laughs> Keeping the city safe. Hey, yo, buddy. Ah, my God! Where are my God? Yeah. Definitely uh, a bit of a family affair, this one tonight, in a good way. Dizzy and the team are raiding a well-known drug den on the hunt for a trio they suspect are selling ice. They move quickly to get control of the house. Clear! Bedroom 2 is clear! The element of surprise is everything. One in the bedroom here. And surprise, surprise, here's two of the three suspects. They find Joseph and his girlfriend, Tali, but the third suspect, Kenny, is nowhere to be seen. Kenny was obviously out. One could argue that he actually had some gear on him and he was, he was out selling it, and that's uh, just the way it worked today. Unfortunately, we missed him. What's your name, buddy? Sorry? Joseph. Uh, cool, my name's Mark. Yeah, All right, Tali, I, I know you. Um, so what we'll do is I'm going to serve you with a search warrant. Okay. Tali has an outstanding warrant for one of my jobs, actually where she was located with a trafficable quantity of methamphetamine. Tali, at this point, I'd like to inform you that you're under arrest uh, for an outstanding uh, arrest warrant. You're in our, in our custody, not free to leave. Do you understand that? Before we get started, man, is there anything in there that you'd like to tell us about before we... Obviously, we're here searching for drugs. Um, Any needles? Yeah. Whereabouts? Yeah, that's cool. I just don't want our guys to get stuck searching. Yeah, we've probably seen them in there. Oh, so they're not hidden? No. Are they capped or uncapped needles? Yeah. All right, cool. Our procedure is to let the drug dog come through and do its search. It will give the handler a number of indications and give us a bit of a hint as to where to look. And sure enough, the sniffer dogs head straight upstairs and make a beeline for Tali's handbag. Anything here that should be? Needles? What's that? But is this all Tali's hiding? That car back there has got the wrong number plates on. The cops noticed this turkey parked in the courthouse car park with fake plates. I'm just doing a licence check. Is this your car? The number plates are incorrect on it, mate. So, have you got some ID? Licensed or unlicensed? Not disqualified? No. All right. Where did you get these number plates from? We found them. He's driving unlicensed in an unregistered car and he's committed another major offence. He's also sporting a man bun in Darwin. Is that for you, dude? Obviously, you're going to get a notice to appear to go to court. What? For a man bun? For unlicensed and unregistered and uninsured and... Oh, 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 oh I get plates. it, I get it. Wrong plates as well. OK. Pick the bad day to come to court. All right, tell me about it. <laughs> it's a bad day for what could be Darwin's only hipster. Just take a seat in the car, mate. That way, I know where you sit. So I'm always surprised by some of the things I see happen in Darwin. This is a first for me. We're going to take those number plates off your car? OK. Uh, well, mate, they don't belong in the car. Are they stolen plates? So you know who owns them? Well, you're in possession of property that's suspected of being stolen, mate. They're not. How do you know that? Either way, he's losing the plates and getting a ticket. Right, yeah, what I'm doing is issuing a, a notice to appear in Darwin Magistrates Court. If you fail to turn up, a warrant may be issued for your arrest, so I advise you to turn up. And when you do turn up, make sure you've got a driver's licence and your car's registered before you park at the courthouse. There's a comedy of errors in relation to this case. I mean, unregistered, for starters, wrong plates, uh, pretty easy for us to detect. What's that car? 
But no sooner have they pulled out of the car park... It says station wagon, white Camry. And Hutchie thinks this car might be on her hot list. Oh, hang on. It's unregistered. Get it. <laughs> Where'd they go? Quick, go. Just rock it. Watch this car, watch this car. Come on, go, go, go. Okay. Come on, get out of my road, car. They've only been on the job for half an hour and already they pulled over their second oh, no. unregistered car. Big M Tango 205, we have a trap on Dyna Beach Road. And Hutchie can't believe what she's seeing. Hello again. Fancy you seeing you here. Hello. You're not having a good day. Jizzy and Seamus are in the middle of a drug raid. There's no sign of the mysterious Kenny, but they may have just found some of the drugs they are looking for. Anything here that should be? Needles. What's that? MSM cutter. Right, at this stage, I'm treating it as a dangerous drug. What's your reason for possessing a dangerous drug? Okay. It's not a drug. It's a yep. I know. MSN is a cutting agent, and it's basically used by druggies to dilute what they've got. It gets more value out of their product, but also too. Druggies use it as throwdowns as well, so they'll put a few of those bags in places where police will look, and hopefully that'll deter us from continuing to search. Along with the cutting agent for Tali's home cooking, there's crystals they suspect to be methamphetamine, and of course, Tali's cooking utensils. A cheeky measuring scale. What are the scales for? And a syringe. I asked you if they were capped or uncapped. They are capped. No, they're not. Well, unless you just threw my bag around, they're... And it seems while the bag was being thrown around, this ice pipe also fell in. What's the reason for possessing a smoking implement for drugs? OK, what are you doing possessing it? She asked me to hold on to it the other day and he came back for you. OK. It's an unlikely story, but not as good as her next yarn to explain how this complete stranger's credit card also fell into her handbag. Who's Miss K.U. Yip? What's your reason for unlawfully possessing property? I found it in the car park near the shops. Yeah, when? Um, three or four days ago. Yeah, why haven't you taken it to the police? Their credit I haven't cards. Had a chance. Hey? I haven't had a chance. In the last three or four days. Oh, me. Druggies are always looking for ways to get money. The last time I arrested her, she was in possession of a lot of stolen property, uh, stolen mail, etc., things like that. So I'm not surprised, and I, I don't really believe her story at all. Tyler, I'll get you to stand up, mate. We'll do give you a quick search. She had used needles, loads of empty clip seal bags, uh, which obviously would have held methamphetamine at some point in time. It's a good result. She was on bail already for methamphetamine use and possession. With Tali in custody, Tizzy and the team continue their search for drugs. Take a seat, man. And Kenny. Off. I know you've been asked, but where's Kenny right now? Do you know? Oh, sure, mate. No, yeah. I thought he was here. He was here last night. <sighs> it's funny, eh? Well, if Tizzy finds that funny, then he won't believe what he finds next. What is it? Now, that car back there has got the wrong number of plates on. Hutchie and Dunlop are pulling over unregistered cars in the courthouse car park, and it's like shooting fish in a barrel. They're unlicensed and unregistered and uninsured and wrong plates as well. They've already busted this bloke for being unlicensed, unregistered and in the possession of dodgy plates. What's that car? It's unregistered. Get it. And now they're onto the second unregistered bust. Big M Tango 205, we have a trap on Dyna Beach Road. How you going, ma'am? You're not having a good day. And hello, hello. Hello again. Look who's in the car. Fancy seeing you here. Hello. It's the Darwin hipster again. Oh, wow. That's a long time no see. Yeah, tell me about it. He's got someone to come and pick him up and you now their car's unregistered. You would think you wouldn't be coming to a place when your car's unregistered where their police might be. Your car's unregistered? No, it's not. I got it registered the other day. Have you got the paperwork for it? Yeah. She insists her car is registered, but Dunlop checks with Hutchie, and sure enough... Yeah. So nothing? No, nah, it's out. OK, well, yeah. we wish you were an infringement. How stupid can you be? She learned the hard way. 800 bucks. I thought it'd be a bit strange that you come pick people up. Exactly. Yeah. No, it's OK. Most people we deal with do stupid things. You can't drive this car any further unless you drive directly to motor vehicle registry. That's one less unregistered car and one less man bun on the road. So far, a bus has turned up drugs, drug paraphernalia and stolen credit cards. 
But a second sweep of the house reveals that the credit cards are not the only thing stolen. What is it? Is there a snake in there at all? It seems these druggies aren't just ice enthusiasts. Kenneth had no uh, permits for the snakes. We did some checks for Parks and Wildlife, so we're aware that he's got these snakes illegally. Luckily, Seamus fancies himself as a bit of a Steve Irwin. I'm going to get it out. Because just the thought of snakes sends Tizzy into a tizzy. I'm just scared of them. I just do not like them. There we go. The only good snake is one that's not near me. <laughs> snakes in the territory go hand in hand. I actually own snakes anyway, so this little fella's a bit flighty. He hasn't been handled very often, but he's not too bad. With Python number one in the bag, Dunk. it's time to take on his much bigger brother. Get the snake in the line. I've owned snakes. Oh. oh. And he's a little grumpy. Once he smells human flesh, that's when it's bad, bad juju. Yeah? <laughs> oh, he wants you. Right, it. we got it. How many cops does it take to catch a snake? He's a little bit more aggressive. There are no drugs on Joseph, so he's free to go. But with Dali and the slammer and Kenny summoned to the court for his snakes, it's also not a bad haul. And this drug den is officially closed for business. At least it sends him a message. Yeah. Kenny turned up for court and was fined 500 bucks, and his snakes were adopted out. Cinderella was charged with four offences, including using his shoe as a weapon. That saw him 1,500 bucks out of pocket. This bloke caught traffic fines totaling 2,250 bucks, but they let him off for the man bun. We've got a trap at the airport motel. Next time on Territory Cops. He had plans to take you here for the next couple of nights, what sounds it. Like. This couple's romantic night. Obviously, he was hoping for a bit of action. Gets gate crashed by the cops. Are you serious? Deadly serious. Opal the drug dog sniffs out a giant stash. Pizza, pizza. And a wee problem on Mitchell Street. It really does smell like piss everywhere.